The best way to describe Jim Clark in the simplest way is that he was one of the most naturally gifted and purest racing drivers that has ever lived. Although we're going to be primarily focusing on his F1 career and the legacy that he left behind, I can't stress enough at just how good Jim Clark was outside of Formula 1. From saloon car racing to sports car racing, the Le Mans 24 hour, Formula 1, Formula 2 and even racing in IndyCar amongst many others, not only did he love racing but he had success in all of these categories. In 1965, he actually skipped the Monaco Grand Prix that season to race at the Indianapolis 500. Not only did he end up winning the race that year, but he went on to dominate the race by starting from the front row and leading 190 out of the 200 laps. And despite missing that one race in the F1 season, which at the time, considering how small the calendar was, was pretty significant, that was no problem for Jim Clark as he became the first ever driver and only person to this day to win the Indianapolis 500 and the Formula 1 World Championship in the same year. But what made Jim Clark so special? Why is this driver who most people have never even seen race and maybe have never really known about him if they are new to Formula 1, why is he so highly regarded? In terms of outside of the car, Jim Clark as a person came from very humble beginnings with his family being sheep farmers. But from all of the things that I've read, from all of the interviews I've heard and pictures I've seen, there's also something that stands out to me about Jim. He is a very softly spoken man who at times was described as being quite shy. Whether he was at the racetrack or away from it, he was always dressed and looked very smart and very professional at all times. From his neat sideswept hair to his clean smile, you can tell from just the old pictures and videos that he was meticulous about every detail in the way that he looked, the way that he talked and the way that he carried himself. You say in your book that curiosity pushed me on right from the start. Now, what exactly is it you feel you've got to prove? It's not what I feel I've got to prove at all. I, I don't think I, I don't really want to prove anything. I, uh, I enjoy motor racing. Um, I started as an amateur uh, hobby no, uh, with no idea or no intention of uh, becoming world champion. But uh, it was, I was curious to find out um, what it was like to drive a car fast, to drive on a certain circuit, to drive a certain type of car. Jim Clark, both as a driver and just as a person, was the ultimate professional, and that level of attention to detail was mirrored in his incredible driving ability. As far as his driving style, the one word that keeps coming up is smoothness. When you watch on boards of Jim Clark, he's never aggressively lurching away at the wheel unnecessarily. His hand movements are extremely economic and are as smooth as can be, with just the slightest adjustments mid-corner when he can feel the car move underneath him. A Lotus mechanic described Clark by saying that compared to his teammates, he used less rubber, less brake pads and less fuel to win a race. In Formula 1, we have also seen many loyal and long-lasting driver team pairings that have become intertwined in their own history. Whether it's the six years that Senna spent with McLaren, the currently eight years that Hamilton has been with Mercedes, or the ten years that Schumacher spent with Ferrari, iconic driver team pairings are nothing new, and undoubtedly amongst those famous combinations was the pairing of Jim Clark and the Lotus team headed by the genius designer and owner, Colin Chapman. The thing about this very combination that sets it apart from the others is that Jim Clark and Colin Chapman had a very special bond both in and out of Formula 1. Jim Clark spent his entire F1 career from his very first race in 1960 and up to his final Grand Prix in 1968 as a Lotus driver. What also makes it special is that the Clark-Lotus combination transcended Formula 1. When Jim raced in saloon cars, he raced in a Lotus Cortina. When he raced in sports cars, he raced in a Lotus 30 and Lotus 40, when he raced in America for the Indy 500, the Tasman series, the USAC Championship series, all of them were for Lotus. And of course, it almost goes without saying that in the context of Formula 1, when you look at photos from the 60s of those cigar-shaped green Lotus cars with a yellow stripe down the middle and that iconic red steering wheel, you can't not think of Jim Clark. 
Jim Clark's ability to step into almost anything and be fast wasn't just down to his raw speed, but it was also his racing and mechanical IQ. He was always very in tune with what was happening with each of his cars, and it's that combination of natural ability, smooth but fast driving style that was easy on the car along with his racing IQ that made him not just a great F1 driver, but part of an elite group of drivers throughout history like John Surtees who won a motor GP title, or even a more recent example like Fernando Alonso who has also excelled and won in multiple endurance categories outside of Formula 1, some drivers just have this hard to comprehend ability to step into almost anything regardless of power, chassis and driving characteristics and get the best out of it and Jim Clark was very much in that elite vein of drivers. When it comes to his F1 career, all of those skills that I just mentioned meant that he was simply in a class of one. And it wasn't just the fact that he won races and titles, but it was the fact that he dominated races and over a relatively short period of time, given that he was only in Formula 1 for 8 full seasons. Jim Clark's short-lived career in Formula 1 is filled with so many incredible stories of races that we as fans now just couldn't imagine in our wildest dreams and to give you just a flavour of a few of these magic moments that encapsulated the genius of Jim Clark, I've drafted in a man who knows a thing or two about iconic drivers and unimaginable performances. The question of who is the greatest driver in the history of our sport is one that's thrown around quite a lot. And to be fair, there's a decent argument for all of them. Senna, Fangio, Prost, Schumacher, Latifi. Okay, maybe not that one, but still. But for me, the greatest driver to ever set foot on this planet and race for the sport that is Formula 1 was Clark. Beset perhaps by his loyalty to Colin Chapman, Clark put in some performances which no other driver on that grid may have been able to accomplish. A prime example of this was the 1967 Italian Grand Prix. After getting a puncture on lap 12 and losing an entire lap, Clark ripped through the pack to not only unlap himself, not only catch back up to the the leaders, but to take the lead with a handful of laps to go. Despite losing victory due to a faulty fuel pump, this was considered by many to be one of the greatest drivers in the history of Formula 1. Not convinced by that example? Okay, here's another one for you, hombre. The 1963 Belgian Grand Prix. Clark came from 8th on the grid to win the race, and finished almost 5 minutes ahead of 2nd place to Bruce McLaren. Not 5 seconds, 5 minutes. Simply astounding. And we've barely skimmed the surface. Those stories are just a few snowflakes from an iceberg of incredible driving performances that Clark had because he was simply a genius at the wheel. Over the course of his F1 career in which he won two world titles, he took part in 73 races taking 25 Grand Prix wins, 32 podiums and unbelievably taking 33 pole positions. Now let me just clarify that again, Jim Clark had more pole positions than he had podiums and that is simply unreal. The thing is, these kind of stats are so difficult to compare because drivers before him had less races and drivers after him had way more. The best way for me to put into context that's easiest to understand in terms of how Clark compares statistically to other greats in Formula 1 is by comparing stats relative to how many races they did in terms of a percentage. That is the best way to even try to compare across different eras. As a percentage of the number of races he won relative to the number of races that he entered, Jim Clark won over 34% of the races that he entered, and if you take away the two drivers who are tied behind him, who are American drivers from the 50s, who only raced in the Indy 500 and never actually raced in F1, when the Indianapolis 500 was still part of the F1 calendar, that puts Jim Clark in 4th place on the all-time list behind Juan Manuel Fangio. Alberto Ascari, Lewis Hamilton, and in front of Michael Schumacher. And hopefully that gives you just an essence in terms of the calibre of driver that he was. 
However, this is where things get mad. When we think about the greatest qualifiers in Formula 1 history, we think about the Senna's, the Hamilton's, and maybe even the Fangio's from the 50s, who all have crazy numbers. Jim Clark, however, as a percentage against the greatest qualifiers in F1 history, ranks second on the all-time list, having taken over 45% of all available polls, which doesn't just put him above Senna and Hamilton, he is comfortably a better qualifier statistically than either of them. Clark is undoubtedly the most underrated qualifier in the history of Formula 1, and I think that really comes down to the fact that not many people now really watched him back in the 60s for themselves to appreciate that side of his greatness. And with the lack of actual footage, it's hard for us fans nowadays to really grasp at just how good he was over the course of one lap. Having said that, though, stats do not lie and Jim Clark needs to be involved in that conversation a lot more. He also holds a few records outright, like being the outright leader for the highest number of Grand Slams at eight, which is two more than Lewis Hamilton, who has six, as well as having the record for the highest percentage of laps led over the course of a single season, when he led over 70% of all of the laps in the 1963 season. The thing is though, away from all of the incredible performances and all of the stunning statistics, the recognition and the respect that Jim Clark received uh, from truly great drivers also speaks volumes about just how much his fellow world champions respected his ability behind the wheel, his character outside of the car, and his place amongst Formula 1's greats. Ayrton Senna described Jim Clark by saying that he was his boyhood hero and that he was simply the best of the best. Juan Manuel Fangio said that he was outstandingly the greatest Grand Prix driver of all time. And Jackie Stewart described Jim Clark by saying that he was everything I aspired to be, both as a racing driver and as a man. Now, one last thing that I noticed whilst researching this video, and this is something that maybe is unfair to talk about in terms of the ifs and the buts, but in my heart of hearts, I could not leave this go unmentioned, is that after his passing at the very beginning of the 1968 season, in which he won the very first race and then passed away before the second, the Lotus team went on to win the Constructors' Championship in that very same year in 1968, and then in the next five years, they would finish third in 69, first again in 1970, and then a mediocre fifth in 71, but following that up with back-to-back -back constructors titles. By then, Jim Clark would have entered his 13th season in F1, which I wouldn't put it past him knowing how great he was, but had he not passed away, we could be sitting here and talking about a potential six-time Formula 1 world champion in Jim Clark. Regardless of what he could have achieved had he not passed away way too soon, the same things are always speculated when people talk about Senna and what he could have done in the Williams of the 90s. The important thing is that even in his short time in Formula 1 before his tragic death, he left a mark and he left a legacy that will never be forgotten. He set records that are almost unbeatable and when it comes to his place amongst the greatest in Formula 1, to me, it would almost be disrespectful to just talk about Clark in the context of only Formula 1. Jim Clark isn't just potentially the greatest F1 driver of all time, Jim Clark is more likely the greatest all-round racing driver to ever step foot into any car in motorsport history. So guys, there you go. That is my video on Jim Clark. This was a very special video about a very special driver. And also shout out to Matt Ames who helped me with a little bit of the old school footage. Now guys, if you did enjoy this video, then don't forget to drop a like and smash that subscribe button as well. I would massively appreciate it. We are on the road to 100k, so hopefully we get there soon. And guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.